All right, I might have clickbaited you all a bit. I don't actually think Horizon 1 is the best Horizon game, but in this video, I'm still going to argue that it is. Let me explain. As a YouTuber that covers a lot of Forza, I get asked all the time what my favorite Horizon game is, and I've never had a good answer for that, because I think they all do something better than the others, and all stand out in some unique ways. Each and every Horizon game is the best at something, so I've never had a favorite. And with that said, Welcome to my new mini-series where I'm going to be covering every Horizon game and explaining why I think that one is the best. And heck, maybe by the end of the series, I'll have learned which game is truly my favorite. But for now, it's time to go to bat for Horizon 1, the OG. I think for those that have played it, this is the easy go-to favorite. It's the father of them all, the brand new direction for the Forza franchise, and it does a lot of things really well that were later abandoned by the newer games. So what makes Forza Horizon 1 the best Horizon? I want to start with probably the most popular and arguably most obvious topic here. The game's personality, or its overall vibe. Horizon 1 overflows with character in a way that really all the other games don't, and you don't have to look far at all to find the strong car culture energy here. This live action intro that plays when you boot up the game for the first time sets the tone right away. This is a game about modern American car culture. Big events, great music, modified cars, and good vibes. It's basically Grid Life the game, although this came before Grid Life, so Grid Life is actually Horizon IRL, and the energy keeps up as we transition into the gameplay itself, with an iconic intro from Scott Tyler, the only character to appear in all five games. He introduces us to our big rival, Darius Flint, and we battle it out in the cover car for what I think is a phenomenal first drive. And for the record, you can actually beat Darius here, but he's got that invincible plot armor and won't acknowledge your earned victory. This is then when you're tossed a little bit of a plot twist that you haven't actually been playing, well, you. Your actual player character is hanging out at the Lakeside Diner, leaning up against his VW Corrado alongside a handful of other drivers, all probably grabbing a bite before heading into the festival. And honestly, what a great way to put you as the player into an exciting, fast-paced intro in a high-end car, while still making sure that you as a character are starting from the bottom and have to earn your way into the Horizon Festival and up its ranks. I'll admit that all the Horizon games have really strong intros, but none of them do it quite like Horizon 1. I could keep talking about the whole roughly half hour long intro sequence and about how it goes on to introduce important, relevant characters that have real personalities and feel like real people, and how the intro further drives home the fact that you're just another competitor that has to earn their keep. But we've got more to discuss about Horizon 1's personality, and I've got some other topics I want to talk about too. So let's keep this train moving by talking about the characters, and more specifically, the rivals. This is really the only game to have rivals. Seven of them, in fact, and all of them, in my opinion, are arguably more memorable than just about any character from any of the newer games. This is for a few reasons. For one, they really exist in the world. Check out this screen at the festival site here, flipping through the Horizon Festival's most famous drivers all people you will race against. And when you do race with them, they talk, delivering some great and sometimes hilariously weird little quips and insults. As they say in America, I am going to mess you up. <laughs> 
You'll spend time in their wristband rank, I guess I could call it, seeing them in multiple races, and then finally do a big 1v1 showdown against them to win their hero car. It reminds me a lot of Most Wanted's Blacklist, which to this day is one of the best racing game career mechanics of all time. And there's another thing about these rivals. They actually appear in the world as people, not only in cutscenes, but actually in-game as at race starts. Just look at these race starts in Horizon 1. Drivers are standing by their cars or walking around, people are taking photos, there's what looks like official event coverage, and fans on the sidelines. Now let's compare that to a race start in Horizon 5. It just feels lonely in comparison. And there's another thing I want to bring up about the start of races. Horizon 1 had real race start locations, like real sign-up booths in the game world. How cool is this? It makes the festival feel real and thought out like it's an actual event happening in Colorado. This only ever existed in Horizon 1. By the time of the second game, we just had these little icons in empty space. And Horizon 1 is chock full of stuff like this. It's the most realized game world by far when it comes to just how well thought out the festival is and how it exists in the world. I want to talk about the racing itself a bit more too, because the racing and race progression is a big part of what makes Horizon 1 so good. You really do start in a humble C-Class Volkswagen and work your way up to S-Class supercars, which you can't even really race at all until you're well into the game, because you haven't earned that level of festival wristband yet in order to compete. Each and every event is one event. The Brembo Midnight Blast, Recaro Rush, the G-Shock Ridge Rave, amazing names, and all real brand sponsored races with specific car restrictions, like hot hatches only or all-wheel drive only. I know I'm going back to this, but again, it makes the whole festival theme feel more realistic and meaningful. It's not just some icon on the map that you can bring any car to, you're signing up for a real race with event restrictions. And I've gotta shout out the way they set the car restrictions for these races, because it shows off good game design. It's not like all these car requirements are random. They're well thought out and balanced to provide a smooth gameplay flow. For example, you start in that C-Class Corrado, but you need a muscle car to compete in this event early on, and you need a Ford for this one. Well, the showcase gives you a Ford Mustang for free if you can beat it, that you can then use to compete in both of those events. And then there's an event later that needs a B-Class car, so you can upgrade the Corrado you already have instead of buying a new vehicle. Then, for example, later on for this event, you need a Dodge. And guess what? The rival that you probably beat just a bit earlier in the game gives you a Dodge Challenger. So if you follow the loose path that the game sets out for you, you actually don't need to buy that many cars because the game knows what you have likely already acquired and builds the progression around that. It's still giving you the choice and freedom to go buy and build your own vehicles for these events, but it provides you with a quick and easy option anyway if you just want to get through it. Not only does this give the gameplay a great cadence and flow, but it also gives you a lot of gameplay variety. If you wanted to, you could beat Horizon 5's entire career with your very first car without ever upgrading it. You never need to change cars or upgrade anything for any of the races in that game. Outside of, of course, things like the showcases, which will put you in a specific car. But that same logic simply will not fly in Horizon 1. Here, you're gonna be racing and experiencing a variety of cars throughout your playthrough. And I think that's for the best. This variety and progression exists outside of the racing too, where even the skill point system is built into the core of Horizon's progression, where you start at rank 250 out of 250 drivers and then have to climb up the ladder, beating sponsor challenges and unlocking more events to earn nice cash bonuses and new cars. 
In Horizon 1, it always feels like you have concrete goals to work towards. You're always thinking about the cars you'll need or what to upgrade next so that you can compete in that event you just unlocked for hitting that new wristband level. There's so much real progression and variety to the gameplay, and while it never feels like it's rushing you or forcing you to push forward, it's still always there ready to offer up a new challenge when you're ready to accept it. And when you do finally reach the end of the game, it feels like you really did work your way up from a total nobody who barely scraped his way into the festival at the bottom of the barrel up to Horizon's superstar and best driver. It's an earned victory. I think it goes without saying that to many, this game has the undeniable best progression in the series. All right, now let's talk quickly about the cars and physics. Now, I know it's 2024 and games have come a long way. I do think Horizon 5 has better car handling than Horizon 1. However, for the time, Horizon 1 was revolutionary. Really, nobody before this had taken a sim-style handling model and put it into a AAA open-world arcade-style game. It was, in my opinion, the first well-executed Simcade, and it was a match made in heaven, and something that I still think heavily carries the series to this day. I mean, what a brilliant idea for the time. You had this well-established console sim experience where the handling felt realistic while also being accessible, and then they threw that into an incredibly fun open world with neons and techno and street racing. Up until this point, if you were a real car guy that was into this, you know, kind of younger, more street tuner scene, you had to pick from franchises like Gran Turismo and Forza Motorsport for their better, more realistic handling, or something like Need for Speed, which had the cars, customization, and street racing that people wanted, but with really unrealistic car physics. Forza Horizon was that beautiful merging of the two, and even though the later games have carried that forward, you've still got to give it up for the original. Now, there's one more big thing here that I need to point out about the cars, the Forza Arrow. Check out these rear wings for these cars in Horizon 1. I would argue that every single one of these looks better than the abomination that we have today. There's no denying it, and it's not even that high of a bar, but Horizon 1 had the best Forza Arrow. Alright, now I've got to talk about the map where you'll be spending all your time driving these cars. Colorado. And I'm going to show my bias here, but this is my favorite location because it's actually the only place in Horizon's history that I've actually driven and driven in some fun cars. I've got family in Colorado and regularly visit to hike and canoe and drive through this beautiful landscape. So to me, Horizon 1 in a way feels like a home away from home and it hits on that fantasy inside me of wanting to drive a Lamborghini through the canyons with no limits or just take a chill cruise in a slow car through the mountains anytime I want to. So yeah, I love this location, but trying to put the bias aside, I still think they nailed this map. It may be smaller and more limited than the others, but there's still a ton of variety here. You've got town centers, mining areas, open plains, canyon cliffside runs, and lush mountain passes. The roads are a blast to drive on, and the scenery is immense. What I love more than anything about this though, is that care really seems to have been taken to place the main festival in a very central location that you can kind of see from anywhere. You might be miles away in a quiet canyonside parking lot, but down there in the valley is the life of the party, the beating heart of the game. It's a subtle touch, but those occasional distant glimpses of the far off festival site really help to drive home the energy that Horizon was all about. And heading towards the festival from the outskirts of the map, especially at night, kind of feels like heading home after a long journey away. And these drives were often made much better by Horizon's soundtrack, Boom, what a transition. Let's talk about Horizon's music. Tastes are, of course, subjective here, 
but I think I'm allowed to inject some of my own bias into this video. And I've got to say that really no soundtrack hits as close to my actual music taste more than Horizon 1's Pulse and Bass Arena radio stations. I've been a huge EDM nerd since the late 90s, so these are both kind of right up my alley. And both of these electronic stations manage to encapsulate not only the hottest summer hits of that era, but also some fun classics and more original music. These days, it's a total nostalgia trip, booting this up to hear the likes of Benny Benassi and Skrillex, and I love it. Horizon's soundtrack always has me bobbing my head while I'm cruising through Colorado. So, Horizon 1 had a great soundtrack, a beautifully detailed and fun-to-drive map, a strong physics model borrowed from motorsport, wonderfully executed gameplay progression, and an energy and feel that drives home real car culture arguably more than any other racing game out there. Every single thing in the original Forza Horizon felt like it mattered and felt like it was fully thought out. It's a shorter and more simple experience than the newer Horizon games, but also more focused and executed beautifully. Every feature here delivers on its promise. Nothing feels half-baked and there are no compromises. Horizon 1 in many ways feels like the most complete experience in the series. And for all of these reasons, the original Forza Horizon is the best Horizon game. But with that said, it's time to say goodbye to Horizon 1 for now and move on to Horizon 2. Thank you so much everyone for watching. If Forza Horizon 1 is actually your favorite Horizon game, let me know. And of course, I want to know why it takes your number one spot, especially if it's something that I didn't bring up in this video. On the flip side, maybe you've played FH1 and didn't love it so much, or have just skipped it for some reason. I want to know what struggles you had with it, or why it might rank lower for you. Whatever your thoughts are on this game, I want to hear them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.